one of the things that keeps people from creating content consistently is the fear of judgment. And maybe you can relate to this. You might get the facts wrong. You might change your opinion later. What if, if you're writing, what if you have typos and grammatical errors that embarrass yourself? What if your videos are not as entertaining or as eloquent as, as you want it to be? Maybe you have some stumbles and uh, you lose people. Of course, those are all... The, the problem with these judgments is that, and the reason why they're so tricky, is that they have, they have a ring of truth to it. It's true that those things could happen. But let me, hopefully, f with my years of experience creating content and building an audience now, give you some something that will soothe you and inspire you to, to get going anyway. Here's what I've learned. You will always, no matter how how good you are, no matter how eloquent you are, no matter how perfectly picked the topic is, no matter how great your facts are, it doesn't matter. You will always lose some people. It's true. It's the strangest thing. I might write the best newsletters in the world and then I send it out and still I get some unsubscribes. It's like, and then of course, newsletters that are not as good may get a few more unsubscribes. Doesn't matter what we do, we will always lose some people. Fans will leave, people will stop watching, um, people won't like or comment. Uh, someone, you, someone who's like supposed to be the perfect ideal client doesn't choose to work with you. Maybe they get offended by something you wrote or, or said. Oh my God, that's our biggest fear, right? Our ideal client, because of our content, decided not to work with us. That happens to me. All the time, probably. Uh, before, well, I don't know because I don't hear from them. But, um, but I do know that some of my content is controversial and I'm sure it turns some people off. So point one, you will always lose some people. So what do we do? If that is the reality for every content creator, okay, we'll always lose some people. So what's, what do we do? Do we then stop and not do it? Because if you stop and not do it, you're just continually losing people because people don't hear from you and they forget about you. And so you're losing people anyway by default. The decay is happening anyway. The audience decay is happening all the time. So what is the solution? The solution is to, 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 to do more. The solution is to create and share because by doing so, the audience growth will outpace the audience decay. This is very important. So you've got to get over yourself. You've got to get over your self-judgments. The way I do it, you've, if you've seen my other videos before, I do what I call the energy reboot. I do it many times a day, like twice at every hour. It only takes me 10 to 20 seconds, but it's basically an intentional breathing exercise. I breathe in love. I breathe out total, complete security. I breathe in love again. I breathe out joy and playfulness. That's basically how it goes. I have a few more breaths. But my practice isn't like the way you should do it, but it's what works for me. What works for you to soothe your inner critic or to, you know, ignore it or however you, however you need to work with the inner critic to not let it control you? What works for you? You probably have something that works for you. For some people, it's some kind of meditation, some kind of, maybe it's even listening to music or affirmations or prayer or whatever. What works for you? And more importantly, are you doing that practice consistently? If you do that practice consistently, that helps you to have a bigger perspective, have more courage, then you will be able to create consistently without the control of the inner critic. So that's, that's up to you. Okay, so number one, we will always lose people no matter how s smart we are, blah, blah, blah. And the fact is, there are plenty of people who are popular, well-loved, have a huge audience, who are continually making factual errors and who don't sound eloquent and lots of mistakes that... They Come on, think about this. Who runs my country? United States. One of the biggest, you know, uh, 
Democrats would say he's one of the biggest pathological liars to ever hold office, public office. Republicans will say, well, he's just you know loosey goosey with the facts. Whatever it is, Trump is clearly doesn't care as much about facts as probably you do, and yet he has you know, and he sometimes rambles and doesn't have you know just says weird stuff, whatever. Not eloquent, not always. But look, he, he's the most powerful man in the world. Okay? So, now that's a, probably a terrible example, but I, I want to give you an extreme example. So what are you afraid of? Why are you so worried about facts? And worried? Now, of course, I care about truth, obviously. Now, two biggest things for me is love and truth. But truth, here's the thing about it. You think you know what the truth is? You think you can get to a point where, yes, now I know the truth and now I will speak it perfectly. Now I'll write it perfectly. If that's true, that means you've stopped learning. I'll give you an example. In the nutrition field, you know, I sometimes follow nutrition. Oh, now we should be taking this. Now we should be eating that. Now we should be avoiding this. Now we should be doing this kind of exercise. If you follow the nutrition and exercise field, it's like every couple years, something that used to be like the best thing you should ever eat, it's like, well, now it's dangerous to eat it. Kale, the best thing in the world, but don't to eat too much of a raw kale because that's bad for your thyroid. I mean, it's like, well, God, how do we keep up with all these rules and these rules that keep changing? Even nutrition that is based on science keeps changing. It's like people, scientists discover, well, what we thought used to be the smallest particle, no, that's not the smallest. We have a smaller one. Are you serious about facts now and truth? No. It, when it comes to creating content, all you know, all you can do is what you understand to be the truth now, okay? And you simply share out of love for, for exploration, for expression, and out of love for your audience. That's all you can do. And if you keep doing that, you'll grow your audience faster than your audience decays. If you don't do that, your audience will just keep decaying. Your network will just keep disappearing, okay? You have got to get over yourself, realizing that even, if even Donald Trump can rise to the biggest fame and power, God, wh why can't you? I mean, some, you care more about truth, and you're more eloquent than, than, than Trump is. Come on. Give me a break. Just get out there already, okay? Don't care about... You, you can always revise your opinions. I do it all the time. Hey, I used to think that this and this, but now I think this. And you're still with me. You're still watching, Okay, uh, basically, you will always lose people, and some of the people you lose will, will, will come back to you years later. It's true. I've been around for 10 years. I know that to be the fact. Just keep growing your audience. Just keep sharing, exploring what you understand to be the truth, doing it out of love, and you will become more confident. You'll become more powerful uh, in, in, in expression. You'll become smarter and wiser, and you'll be helping more people. Because whatever you understand now is going to help somebody else. All right? Go for it. Let go of the inner critic. Just go for it. Because no one else is judging you except for yourself. Just let it go. Know that you're going to help someone just by speaking whatever you already know. Do it.